Welcome to this episode of Engineer's Kitchen. For smart factory applications, redundancy and network are very important parts of such applications. Bernhard, what can you tell us about it? Um, yeah, actually, today, uh, thank you. Um, it's nice to be here. Um, today we are talking about the Xenon network. Um, we've implemented the Xenon network already um, for decades, let's say. Um, it was introduced already with uh, version 5, five as as yeah. Uh, so it was long before my time. Um, but what is the Xenon network, in fact? Um, we are always talking about a server, a standby, so a primary server, a standby mm -hmm. server, and several clients. So this is the typical architecture in the Xenon network. <clears throat> the first network, or we call it dominant behavior, this was already introduced long time before. Um, we have a server, a primary server and a standby server. And yeah, if the primary server fails, the standby server will take over the role of the primary server and will do all the archiving, all the uh, communication to the driver. Which, which also means that the clients are switched automatically then to, Correct, to the yes. new domain. So for the client, it's uh, really transparent and uh, there is um, a switch over. Mm -hmm. So this behavior was in Xenon um, for a long time. And, uh, but this does not really fit to all applications. Um, with uh, version 7.11, we introduced two new modes, or two new ways of redundancy. Um, the first is the non-dominant redundancy. What does this mean? In fact, if the primary server fails, standby will take over again. Um, but now, if the server won, is uh, coming back online and is recovered, mm -hmm. then this, the former primary server one, will be now the standby okay. and will stay in the standby mode. Okay, until the next fail then? Until okay. server two will fail, fail. in okay. that case. Mm -hmm. So the advantage here is uh, reducing uh, switch over times because all the switch over, of course, all the clients, everything mm. has to right. be synchronized and so on. So here, uh, in this scenario, uh, you're reducing mm -hmm. Um, switch over okay. times. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and on top of the non-dominant behavior, we have a rated network. Okay. That sounds interesting. The rated network. Um, yeah. Typically, we know that uh, all the connectivity, for example, is done from mm -hmm. server and standby. Mm -hmm. um, but the primary server is the leading server, so he's uh, responsible to do all the archiving, to all the, sure. the commands, uh, set value, and so on. What happens if on the server one, uh, the server one will lose uh, some connections, mm -hmm. um, but server two, or the standby, mm -hmm. um, is still able to connect to these PLCs. So in that situation, we would archive on mm -hmm. the primary one, uh, so on the primary server, we will do the archiving mm -hmm. and we'll record a lot of invalid bits mm -hmm. because sure. connections are not there. Yeah. But server two would have all this data available. But mm -hmm. server one is the primary and will mm -hmm. sure. we'll record less data than what Correct. Would be yeah. mm -hmm. So in that case, it is possible to create the kind of formula or um, some rules. Mm -hmm. And even if both servers are active available, mm -hmm. In that situation, they will switch the roles okay. and oh. server two with the better connection will take over um, the responsibility of a primary server. Okay. So the switching criteria is <coughs> no longer the fail of one of the servers, but any other criteria, whatever you... Correct. It's up of. to the engineer or okay. to the project, to the situation mm -hmm. on how you would configure that and you can That's create right. a really flexible um, yeah, network behavior. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to configure something like that? Yeah, um, I would like to show you that directly on the editor. So um, we have here the project and the settings. Mm -hmm. It's again just activating uh, the famous checkbox for the network. Define here a primary server one, for example. So it's uh, mm -hmm. just by type in the name mm -hmm. of, the, of, the, of, of the computer, let's say. So. Mm -hmm. That's the normal configuration as we already know it. 
And now we have here some settings. We can define the redundancy mode. Mm -hmm. I will switch to rated network, which means uh, yeah, um, to use the third one. And then we have some properties here, switching delay, hysteresis, and uh, at, at that time, I will mm -hmm. explain that later on on, on the time okay. table. Um, but uh, I would like to show you how to uh, configure the rating okay. criteria. So there is a known dialog for that. And here we can select data points. Okay. So I just select uh, for demonstration one of any. Yeah. That might be some PLC or uh, variables which are connected to any PLCs. But it's also possible to use internal variables, okay. to use uh, performance indicators, indicators uh, if uh, one computer is overloaded and has less performance available out of memory or something like that, you can use that also for the criteria. So it's completely flexible. Whatever it's completely use. flexible. Uh -huh. Right. Um, yeah. In this dialog, we can define a weighting which uh, will weight each mm -hmm. data point against each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. So if I would like to reduce. The, the importance, then I just reduce the value. So it's a weighting um, the variable, variables um, against each other. Then we can define uh, what should be the comparison. It's um, checking only status and um, if the data point is uh, available or not available. Or uh, you can check on values greater or lower than a, a dedicated. It's okay. similar like the, the limits. Mm -hmm. okay. So we can define here, for example, some values. Uh, this data point, we just want to check the mm -hmm. status. Uh, here we would like to check uh, another value. Mm -hmm. So um, quite simple configuration. Mm -hmm. And after that, we have now here um, the formula configured. And we can define a switching delay. Um, the principle behind is um, server and standby will calculate, mm -hmm. each for them will calculate, uh, uh, according to the formula, mm -hmm. a dedicated value. So okay. then there will be a result, mm -hmm. and this result is compared. Okay. And uh, wherever the higher result, mm -hmm. according to the formula, uh, this PC will get mm -hmm. the primary server. Mm -hmm. So it's the better one. In fact, the better one, yeah. And um, yeah, here we can define a hysteresis. So there has to be a uh, that sure. it's uh, if one data point is toggling, that not, not always the network is uh, switching mm -hmm. and switching. Uh, so we can define a hysteresis, and we can define a switching delay. How long it should be delayed? How long this situation has to be um, stable or valid? And we have to define a uh, dead time. So if one switch over is done, then you can define a dead time, and in this time there is no no, no more switch. Okay, again. Got it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, yeah, that's for the configuration on the editor side. Mm -hmm. So it looks pretty simple for me. Yeah, uh, really straightforward. And um, yeah, here as um, as a reference, so we have here um, data points for from server one mm -hmm. and server two. We see the the difference, we have the hysteresis. So this does mean if the value on the server two, um, yeah, there are no changes for now. Mm -hmm. Server one, the result mm -hmm. is um, yeah, changing here. So on this time, we are over the hysteresis, mm -hmm. but um, the switching delay is too short, so no switch will happen so nothing here. Happens. Nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Now the situation is for a longer period. Switching delay is mm -hmm. running, and uh, if the switching delay says, OK, now uh, it's time to switch. Um, they will switch the roles. Server, so standby will get primary. Mm -hmm. Primary will get standby. Switching, uh, that time switching is active. So in this time, there is no additional uh, mm -hmm. switch. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, if situation changes again and uh, switching delay expires mm -hmm. and no that time switching is active, then they will switch, switch again, again. Wow. switch back again. Impressive. Um, impressive. Yeah, with this situation or with this uh, feature, you're quite flexible in configuring the network uh, in an, the same easy way as we are using um, know it from the dominant and non-dominant network. Very, very interesting. Thanks, Bernhard, a lot. I think with this, we are more than ready for smart factory applications. Bernhard, Definitely. thanks a lot for joining me today as a smart present, one of Thank our you. famous Engineers Kitchen T-shirts. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming today. Welcome. And thanks for joining this episode of Engineers Kitchen.
What a delicious episode of Copa Data's Engineer's Kitchen. If you are still hungry, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.